morning, everybody. Good morning. How uh, is everybody doing today? Um, I want to start by being thankful myself. I want to um, thank Alex. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much. And Sunny Ray, welcome to Step Seven, my friend. You are right where you need to be. Um, I love these verses here that uh, that Brian just read. If I can get there, James chapter one. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. It says, do what it says. Okay, I love that. It's so simple. Do what it says. I'm talking about God's law a little bit here. Okay? Don't just listen to what the Bible says. Do what it says. Okay? And it, it finishes off by saying that we will be blessed in doing so. I love that. I want that. I want to be blessed. God's law. And in, in going there, I want to go all the way back. You don't need to turn there, but in the, in the book of Genesis, we might actually see what we could say is the very beginning of God's law. Adam and Eve are placed in this wonderful paradise, a place called Eden, and God says, here you go, here you go. One thing he says, though, is don't, don't eat from that tree. Why is it, folks, that they're not <coughs> supposed to eat from that tree? Because God said so. Bam! Bam! <laughs> They're not supposed to eat from that tree because God said so. Yeah. Works for me. <clears throat> the beginning of God's law. Okay? And he says once again in here, he says it's his perfect law that does what, you guys? Gives freedom. God's perfect law that gives freedom. You know, there's a there's a hymn. I've mentioned this from up here before. There's a hymn that's titled simply Trust and Obey. Okay? Trust and Obey. Let's uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, I, I thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the fellowship. I thank you for these friends. And uh, I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for your law this morning. And I just pray that right now you would uh, help me to get out of the way. I just pray that you would use me. And we just love you, Lord. And we pray this as we always do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Gentleman by the name of John Samus actually wrote this hymn that I just mentioned. He wrote it back in 1887. <clears throat> Trust and Obey. And the, the chorus of the, of the hymn actually says, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Okay. He mentions happiness here. It almost feels like to me that it's the key to happiness. Okay. Trust. Trust means what? Means have faith in something. To trust in something we have we have faith in. It. Trust and obey. And when we talk about obey, what is it that we're talking about here? Perhaps it's God's Word. We are to have faith. We are to trust in God's law. And as we read in James, we will be blessed 
in doing so. So today I stand up here with a message on God's law, okay? Here comes the fire and brimstone, everybody, okay? Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> bam. Brian's got this new deal today, it's bam, okay? Um, and you know that word obedient, that's a big word. Okay? It's an all-encompassing word. You can't be a little bit obedient. Okay? It's kind of like being a little bit pregnant. Can't be done. Okay? And, and trust me, I, I need to hear this message. Okay? We're all in the same boat here, folks. You know, I, I try. I want to be, be more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. Trust and obey. I hope today, my friends, I hope that today I can help to create a, a new relationship, a, a new attitude, perhaps a new appreciation in your heart for God's law. Okay? We ask this question around here quite a bit at step seven. How's your way been working? Okay? We coined that phrase a lot longer before Dr. Phil ever said it. Okay? How has your way been working? I'll tell you what, when I go my way, I, I get into trouble. Okay? Let's look at a couple of verses out of the book of Psalms right now. Turn to Psalm chapter 1. Middle of the Bible. Big old book of Psalms, 150 chapters in there. Go to Psalm 1. David wrote most of these Psalms. The ones that I'm going to be reading today, he wrote all. Wonderful study, King David. Psalm chapter 1. And I'm going to start in verse 1, right out of the gate. Psalm 1-1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does... Prospers. We see it again there. Whatever he does, prospers. And why is that? It's because he delights in God's law. It uses the word meditate here. It doesn't say he considers it. It doesn't say he gives it a little bit of thought. It says he meditates on God's law. Okay? And he prospers because of that. Turn to your right, Psalm 19. <clears throat> Psalm 19. Again, King David. I'll start in uh, I'll start in verse 7. Which says, The law of the Lord is perfect. There it is again. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure, and all together righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. Could God's law be raised up any more than what I just read there? I mean, look at that. It's perfect. It's trustworthy. It's right. It's radiant. It's sure. God's law, you guys. God's law. And then I can't talk about... God's law without going to 119. Turn to Psalm 119. 
Longest chapter in Scripture. 176 verses in there. Psalm 119. Again, King David. And I'm going to work. Uh, I'm going to start in verse 11. He says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate. There it is again. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Okay? And one last one. We're right there. Verse 45 in this same chapter. Verse 40 says, I will walk about in freedom. Boom. Bam. For I have sought out your precepts. Bam is right. Okay? Folks, this is step seven. How many of us in here sometimes don't have a clue what the word freedom means? Okay? We come here to step seven to get into a relationship with Christ. And to get into a relationship with Christ means to love his law, you guys. He's the creator. Again, how's your way been working? Maybe we need to look at it a different way. Okay? You know, and when we, we talk about God's law, I like to go back to the Old Testament. And I, I recognize, and maybe there's more, but I recognize four laws back there. We have, uh, we have health laws, okay? We have health laws. If you need to defecate, please go outside of the camp and do it out there and bury it. Okay? That's a health law. <laughs> Leviticus 11 tells us, you know, maybe this isn't probably the best thing for you to eat. Okay? We have health laws. We have uh, ceremonial laws in the Old Testament. Okay? If you sin, you need to take a lamb. And not just any lamb. You need to take a perfect lamb to the temple to the Levites, to the priests, and that lamb will be sacrificed, this perfect lamb. Blood will be shed. That's just one, but we have these ceremonial laws that relate to the temple. Okay, that's two laws. We have what you might call the, the big dog laws, okay? The Ten Commandments, the Ten Biggies, okay? Also known as the, the moral code, the Ten Commandments, okay? Then you might have, we have what you could call civil laws, okay? Back then the Pharisees kind of kept adding on, kind of like we do in today's society. We add on all these laws, hopefully, to help us stay true to the Ten Commandments. I believe if we could, if we were a bit better at keeping those Ten Commandments, we could get rid of a whole bunch of laws that are on the books right now. Okay? An example of a civil law that upholds the Ten Commandments I like to use is um, speeding. Okay? On this stretch of highway, I'm not supposed to go past 75 miles an hour. That's a civil law that holds up, perhaps, one of the moral code, the Ten Commandments, which might be what? Thou shalt not kill. Okay? Thou shalt not kill. That's a good thing. But we have to be careful. You know, we like to call the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees back in Christ's time, we, we like to label them as legalists. My word, look at what's happened in our society with the law. Okay? I tried to have a little fun this week and, and do some studying on our laws and it was it was overwhelming for me. I couldn't even wrap my hand around it. 
my arms around it. It was, um, I, I, I reckon, the, the first thing that came up when I was doing this search is we have over 20,000 laws just pertaining to the ownership of a gun. 20,000 of them, okay? I also read that from, from 2000 to 2007, our lawmakers came up with 452 new crimes, okay? In seven years, they came up with 452 new crimes, okay? New crimes means what? means new laws, guys, okay? You know, new laws. And that doesn't even include all the statutory laws we have out there. We have volumes and volumes and volumes of laws out there. And every year they just keep getting added on and added on and added on. I, uh, you know, I, I hope you're all doing your study. Wouldn't want you to be a lawbreaker. Hope you're keeping up on all this. It's crazy, isn't it? You talk about legalism. I want to, uh, let's go to the New Testament. Turn to, turn to Colossians, you guys. It's towards the back. It's towards the back. Colossians chapter 2. These are some pretty, pretty popular verses when it comes to God's law. Colossians 2. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read in verse 13. Colossians 2.13. Paul says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Verse 16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. Okay? So a little confusing here. What is he talking about here? He tells us that something was nailed to the cross. Okay? Something was nailed to the cross. Now, obviously, what was it that was nailed to the cross? Jesus was nailed to the cross. But we're also seeing in here that some kind of written code was nailed to the cross. What, what is he talking about here? And notice as the last verse that I read there said that these are a shadow of things to come. These are pointing forward, okay? What was it other than Jesus that was nailed to the cross? I mentioned these laws. Was it the Ten Commandments? Was it the ceremonial law? Notice what he says in, uh, in verse 16. He says, triumphing over them by the cross. What was it? that Jesus triumphed over as far as the law is concerning back there. Sin. Sin, and also what? What, what ceased shortly after? The ceremonial law, my friends. Okay, and we can, we can see that. Turn to your right, just a little ways. Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Okay? Hebrews chapter 10. And I'll look at, I'll read verse 1. And we see this shadow of things to come again. It says in verse 1, the law, well, what law are we talking about here? 
the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. Okay? Not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices, repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. So what we're talking about here is the ceremonial law, folks. It's obvious. Okay, now granted, the Jewish people after the cross continued probably for a time, probably up until about 70 A.D., some of them continued the ceremonial worship, but until 70 A.D., that's when Jerusalem went down. That system probably stayed intact for a time. But to think, and some of us love to say, oh, well, Pastor, I'm, I'm not under law, I'm under grace, okay? Did, did God nail the Ten Commandments to the cross? Is it okay for me to go out and murder someone today? Obviously not. God's perfect law will bless us the closer we can stay to it. And to say that I'm under grace, which we are, but to be under grace means to love God. God's law. Okay? They go hand in hand. That's a, that's a bam, right? Bam. <laughs> um, and you know, just to drive it home, turn to Exodus, second chapter in Scripture. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. We have, we have God talking to Moses here. Okay? Second book in the Bible. Exodus chapter 31. And after this discourse on the Sabbath, we get to the end of the chapter. And I want to re read with, or follow with me verse 18. It says, When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the testimony, the tablets of stone, inscribed by the finger of God. Notice the symbolism. If you were to go home today and to find a, a box on your front patio, it was kind of heavy. You picked up that box, and it's this heavy box, and you, you took it in and you put it on the kitchen table, and you notice written on it. And it says, this box contains the law of God. Written in stone by his finger. Would you maybe take that a little seriously? Huh? Would that hit home? Could there be more symbolism here? This is where we get the, the saying. It's written in stone. There it is. God's law. Written in stone by his finger. And folks, it's not so he can condemn you. It's because he's the creator. He wrote the manual. Okay? He loves you. He knows what's best for you, okay? And besides, you can't, you can't nail a stone tablet to a cross. You can nail parchment to a cross, but not a stone tablet, all right? <coughs> and again, we talk about God's perfect law. And if we jump forward into the New Testament, we see Jesus, and Jesus is just so incredibly practical. He is so practical. The, the Pharisee tries to trip him up. And he says, what's, what's the most important law? And Jesus simply says, to love God and to love your neighbor. Okay? Last week, Kirk came and just gave that wonderful sermon on love. Okay? Today, I stand up here preaching on God's law. 
And once again, my friends, it comes down to love. Okay? It's beautiful. It comes down to love. To love Jesus and not his law is to not trust his teaching, folks. Amen. It's that simple, okay? It's like the, the resurrection without the cross. Mm. Okay? His blessing comes in the form of the resurrection. His love, though, is shown first. Where? At the cross. Okay? To have a problem with his law is to want the resurrection without the crucifixion or the cross, folks. Okay? And I don't say this in a legalistic way. I, I look at Galatians 2.20, which says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Okay? But Christ lives in me. Okay? Jesus knows how we should live our lives. And he will bless us if we will follow his teachings. Okay? I'm thankful for God's law, you guys. God's law proves his love for me. <coughs> his way works, you guys. His way works. Remember, friends, it's his perfect law that gives freedom, that gives happiness, that gives joy, that proves his love for us. It's his perfect law that does that. Once again, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We, we thank you for this, this manual you've left behind for us. Help us to hide it in our hearts, Lord, that we might not sin against you. Help us to realize in our hearts, Lord, that the closer we can stay to your directives, the more blessed we will be in our lives. Lord, I thank you again. Help us to remember that to be under grace means to love your law, Lord. And Father, again, I just, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these friends. And I just uh, lift up praises, lift up our petitions, our prayers, always, Lord, in that most precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.